John Mathis's journey was anything but ordinary. From his earliest days strumming on an old guitar to his first taste of the spotlight on the local talent show circuit. With each chord he played and every note he sang, he was inching closer to his destiny as he became a household name synonymous with excellence in music. You got death threats once that happened as well, when you just spoke a little bit about your private life. Mm -hmm. What brought you to just talk about who you are? I'm a kid at heart. They don't like it, then you do something else. Are you ready for a mesmerizing tale of one of the most iconic voices in history? Well, you're in for a treat because today, because we're taking an epic journey through the extraordinary life of John Mathis. Buckle up, because we're about to embark on a whirlwind adventure of the iconic legend. Early Days In the heart of Gilmer, Texas, on the 30th of September, 1935, a legend was born. Johnny Mathis, the fourth child among seven born to Clem Mathis and Mildred Boyd. Both of his parents worked as domestic cooks, instilling in him the values of hard work and perseverance from a young age. With African-American roots and a proud heritage tracing back to his mother's Native American ancestry, Mathis's upbringing was steeped in cultural richness. At the tender age of five, the Mathis family relocated to the bustling city of San Francisco, settling in the vibrant Richmond district on 32nd Avenue. It was here that Johnny would come of age, surrounded by the sights and sounds of urban life, shaping his musical journey in ways he could never have imagined. His father, a talented vaudeville performer, recognized Johnny's budding talent and purchased an old upright piano for $25, a small investment that would forever change his life. Encouraged by his father, Johnny began honing his musical skills, learning songs and routines from generation to generation. His parents, proud supporters of his burgeoning talent, even managed his fan club, laying the groundwork for his future success, learning, and school experiences. From the early age of 13, Johnny found himself under the tutelage of voice teacher Connie Cox, who saw great potential in the young prodigy. Johnny eagerly helped around Cox's house in exchange for lessons. During these lessons, he fully immersed himself in learning vocal scales, exercises, and classical singing techniques. Under Cox's guidance, Johnny's voice flourished, laying the foundation for the mesmerizing vocals that would captivate audiences worldwide. But Johnny's talents were not confined to the realm of music alone. A star athlete at George Washington High School, he excelled in sports, showcasing his prowess as a high jumper, hurdler, and basketball player. His athletic achievements earned him a scholarship to San Francisco State College, where he continued to shine on the track and the court. During his time at San Francisco State, Johnny's athletic prowess reached new heights, setting a high jump record that still stands as one of the college's top achievements. His remarkable talent caught the attention of the local media, with a 1954 article in the San Francisco Chronicle showcasing Johnny's high jumping skills alongside future NBA star Bill Russell. Yet, Johnny's passion for music remained unwavering despite his athletic achievements. He found solace in song, pouring his heart and soul into his performances. His high school friend Merle Saunders provided him with his first opportunity to showcase his vocal talents in a band setting. In 2008, Johnny paid tribute to Merle Saunders at his funeral, acknowledging his friend's pivotal role in kickstarting his music career. It was a touching reminder of friendship and mentorship's profound impact on one's journey to success. As Johnny's story unfolds, it serves as a testament to the power of passion, perseverance, and unwavering dedication. From humble beginnings in the heart of Texas to the bright lights of San Francisco, Johnny Mathis's journey is a timeless tale of talent and triumph, an inspiration to all who dare to dream. How the music got started. During a casual Sunday afternoon jam session alongside a jazz sextet led by a friend at the renowned Black Hawk Club in San Francisco, Johnny Mathis found himself in a transformative moment. His soulful performance caught the attention of Helen Noga, one of the club's founders, who recognized his extraordinary talent. Impressed by his vocal prowess, she became his music manager, promptly securing him a gig at Andy's 440 Club for weekend performances. The turning point arrived in September 1955, when Noga learned of George Avakian's presence in the area. 
Avakian, the head of popular music A&R at Columbia Records, was on vacation nearby. Despite initial reluctance, Noga persisted in persuading Avakian to see Mathis's performances at the 440 Club. Upon hearing Mathis's mesmerizing voice, Avakian was captivated. He quickly sent a message to his record company, excitedly telling them about a talented 19-year-old he found. They wasted no time in sending over contracts. Mathis's journey took an unexpected turn in 1956 when he faced a pivotal decision. Despite being sought after for his athletic prowess as a high jumper and invited to try out for the United States Olympic team bound for Melbourne, Mathis chose to heed his father's counsel and pursue a professional singing career. His debut album, Johnny Mathis, A New Sound in Popular Song, initially met with modest success in the jazz genre. Undeterred, Mathis relocated to New York City, where he graced the stages of renowned nightclubs. His trajectory changed dramatically when he crossed paths with Mitch Miller, Columbia Records vice president and record producer, who played a pivotal role in shaping the signature Mathis sound. Miller's preference for soft romantic ballads led to collaborations with esteemed conductors and music arrangers like Ray Conniff, Ray Ellis, Glenn Osser, and Robert Mersey. By late 1956, Mathis had etched his name into the annals of music history with the recording of two enduring classics, Wonderful, Wonderful, and It's Not For Me To Say. Simultaneously, his talents caught the eye of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, securing him a role to perform the latter in the motion picture Lizzie in 1957. Life Outside Of Work He is more than just a singer. He's a versatile individual with various talents and enthusiasms. Mathis has embraced Catholicism, having converted to the faith. Despite missing out on the Olympic high jump trials, his love for sports still burns bright. He's an enthusiastic golfer, boasting an impressive nine holes in one. Mathis takes his love for golf by hosting numerous Johnny Mathis golf tournaments in the United Kingdom and the United States. His dedication to charitable causes shines through as he's been hosting a charity golf tournament in Belfast since 1985. Additionally, the annual Johnny Mathis Invitational Track and Field Meet, which began in 1982 at San Francisco State University, continues to thrive. But sports aren't his only forte. He also enjoys culinary pursuits. In 1982, he published a cookbook titled Cooking for You Alone showcasing his skills in the kitchen. Throughout the years, he has lent his support to various organizations, including the American Cancer Society, the March of Dimes, and the NAACP. Tragedy struck on November 25th, when Mathis returned home to find his Hollywood house destroyed by fire. Despite rebuilding, his home faced another challenge in 23, when powerful storms caused a hillside collapse, again damaging his property. At 87 years old, he continues to perform at concerts, but the timeline for his return to his beloved home remains uncertain. While the life of Johnny Mathis has seen its share of ups and downs, he remains an icon, not just in music, but in resilience and generosity. He's also been open about his sexuality, though it wasn't always easy. Initially, he refrained from discussing it publicly due to receiving death threats after an interview with a magazine, Gay Saga. Throughout a significant portion of his career, he chose to keep his sexuality private. While he didn't hide the fact that he was gay, he didn't openly discuss it until an interview with United States Magazine in 1982, where he casually mentioned, Homosexuality is a way of life that I've grown accustomed to. Years later, in April 2006, Johnny revisited the topic in a podcast interview with The Strip, reflecting on why he had been hesitant to talk about it partly attributing it to generational differences. In a 2011 interview with UK Saga magazine, Johnny spoke more openly about his sexuality, acknowledging that there was a time when being gay was seen negatively, but that attitudes had shifted over the years, thanks in part to public figures like Elton John, who had come out. He also admitted that he used to worry people might think less of his music because of his sexuality. Vincent L. Stevens, in his article titled, Shaking the Closet, Analyzing Johnny Mathis' Sexual Elusiveness, 1956-1982, explores Johnny's approach to his sexuality. 
Stevens argues that Johnny's public persona in the 1950s, though seemingly heterosexual, was a calculated commercial strategy to appeal to white audiences and maintain a respectable image in the African-American community. Despite this, Stevens suggests that Johnny's portrayal of sexual ambiguity in his music and public image was complex and open to interpretation, offering a unique perspective on queer subjectivity in the context of racial and commercial pressures. Despite the complexities surrounding his sexuality, Johnny, now in his 80s, remains active in the music scene. He performed to a sold-out crowd in Florida as part of his 60th anniversary concert tour, proving that age hasn't dulled his passion for music. Romantic Affairs Johnny Mathis, the sensational singer with a voice that melts hearts, has led a fascinating romantic life, shrouded in mystery and intrigue. While he has been romantically involved with both men and women, Mathis has maintained a discreet profile, keeping his dating history under wraps. In the 1970s, whispers of romance surrounded Mathis and fellow singer Estelle Bennett, adding fuel to the speculation about his love life. However, their relationship remained enigmatic, and despite their connection, they never walked down the aisle together. Tragically, Bennett passed away in 2009, leaving behind questions about her ties to the iconic crooner. Among Johnny's admirers, curiosity often arises about his marital status. Yet the truth remains clear. Johnny Mathis has never exchanged vows with anyone. Despite persistent rumors about potential weddings, no concrete evidence has emerged to confirm such claims. In a straightforward interview with The Guardian, he clarified that he has never been married and has no children. Instead, he finds joy in being an uncle to his siblings' children. Mathis has shared romantic connections with fellow celebrities throughout his life, adding to the intrigue surrounding his personal life. Names like Regina Bell, Denise Williams, and Patty Austin have been linked to the crooner and the late American producer George Avakian, who was a significant figure in Johnny's life until his passing in 2007. Another notable relationship was with American choral conductor Mitch Miller, who sadly passed away in 2010. Despite the public's curiosity about Johnny's romantic entanglements, the iconic artist remains focused on his craft, captivating audiences worldwide with his talent. In the life of Johnny Mathis, occasional controversies about his sexuality have emerged, and the media still remains uncertain about whether he has children. Career Achievements Mathis holds a remarkable distinction as one of the longest-standing recording artists under the esteemed Columbia label. He mainly stayed with Columbia Records throughout his career, except for a short break in the mid-1960s when he spent four years with Mercury Records. His affiliation with Columbia spans from 1956 to 1963, and then from 1968 to the present day. Mathis's impact on the music industry extends beyond his loyalty to a single label. He proudly boasts of a remarkable achievement, having five albums simultaneously on the Billboard charts, a milestone achieved by only a handful of artists like Frank Sinatra, Barry Manilow, and others. Mathis's musical legacy shines through the release of an incredible 200 singles, with an impressive 71 songs making their mark on charts worldwide. Further Appearances Across his remarkable career, he made an unforgettable impression on television and film, mesmerizing audiences with his unmatched talent. His television achievements are outstanding, including the creation of 12 of his own specials and over 300 guest appearances. Noteworthy is Mathis's exceptional record of 54 appearances on The Tonight Show, where the iconic Johnny Carson once dubbed him the best ballad singer in the world. Johnny's charm and musical prowess transcended eras, as evidenced by his appearance on The Tonight Show alongside Johnny Carson's successor, Jay Leno, in a memorable performance of the Shadow of Your Smile, alongside saxophonist Dave Koz on March 29, 2007. His influence extends beyond late-night television, with his timeless songs making their mark in over a hundred television shows and films across the globe. His participation in the Live by Request broadcast on the A&E Network in May 1998 garnered the largest television viewing audience in the series' history. Beyond his musical endeavors, Mathis has lent his voice and presence to impactful projects, 
such as the narrator for the 2014 documentary film 51 Dons. The film highlights the inspiring tale of the 1951 San Francisco Dons football team, which remained undefeated despite facing racial discrimination. This story deeply resonates with Mathis due to his shared values of courage and equality. In the realm of scripted entertainment, Mathis's versatility shines through as he graced the season 14 finale of Criminal Minds, portraying himself as an old friend of David Rossi and serving as the best man at Rossi's wedding in the episode Truth or Dare. Furthermore, Johnny's talent extends to the silver screen, where he portrayed himself in the 2017 movie Just Getting Started, adding another dimension to his multifaceted career. Through his diverse and impactful television and film appearances, Johnny Mathis continues to captivate audiences and solidify his legacy as an entertainment icon. How he spends money. Despite his considerable wealth, he has a surprisingly modest approach to his finances that may defy the lavish expectations often associated with celebrity lifestyles. Mathis chooses a cautious approach over splurging lavish items such as luxury cars or private jets. This reflects his long-standing preference for frugality which has shaped his financial outlook for many years. For more than 50 years, Mathis has lived in the same house in the valley. It's been his home through thick and thin, a place of comfort and simplicity in the busy world of showbiz. But in 2015, when his house caught fire and was badly destroyed, Mathis had to move to a fancy penthouse in Beverly Hills while he figured out what to do. But he's determined to rebuild his old home because it means a lot to him. Mathis isn't just careful with his house. He's smart with his money in other ways too. Instead of spending it on things he doesn't need, he invests a lot of it in making music. He even has his own record label. This shows how much he loves music and wants to leave a lasting mark in the music world. In an interview with The Telegraph, Mathis talked about how he started making smart investments early on. He stated that his business manager had told him to be wise with his money, so he listened. He bought an apartment building in Manhattan and even got a post office in the Midwest. These might seem like strange investments, but Mathis knew that property is usually a safe bet. It doesn't lose its value. Instead, the value of property investment appreciates over time. Johnny Mathis demonstrates a unique combination of skill, modesty, and financial intelligence through his careful management of money and wise investments. Nearly succumbed to alcohol addiction, in a brief interview at a Los Angeles on his way to a golf course, Johnny reflected on past experiences and recounted difficulties, including a dangerous encounter with Dr. Max Jacobson, also known as Dr. Feelgood. Struggling with laryngitis during a demanding performance at New York's Copacabana, Mathis turned to Jacobson's treatments for relief, unaware of their addictive properties due to the amphetamines they contained. The ordeal left Johnny grappling with addiction, compounded by excessive champagne consumption until an unexpected intervention by Nancy Reagan spurred him towards recovery. Encouraged by her concern, Mathis embarked on a transformative journey, seeking refuge in a rehabilitation facility three decades ago, where he found the strength to overcome his demons. When asked about the challenges of maintaining abstinence, Johnny reflected on the profound realization that his passion for performing outweighed any temptation to relapse. Fueled by a deep-seated love for his craft, Johnny remained steadfast in his commitment to sobriety, recognizing that anything that detracts from his artistry threatens the essence of his being. Legal War – The Noga Split In a twist of fate in October 1964, Johnny Mathis found himself entangled in a legal battle with his then-manager, Helen Noga. Determined to sever ties with Noga and assert control over his career, Johnny took legal action to dissolve their management arrangement. However, Noga retaliated with a counterclaim in December 1964, igniting a legal showdown that captured headlines and tested Mathis's resolve. Unfazed by the legal drama, he embarked on a journey to reclaim autonomy over his artistic endeavors. He forged ahead by establishing John Matt Records in California on May 11, 1967, signaling a new chapter in his music career. With John Matt Records as his platform, Mathis regained control over his recordings, enabling him to explore and express his musical vision without constraints. 
but Johnny didn't stop there. Recognizing the need for a comprehensive approach to managing his burgeoning career, he founded Rojan Productions on September 30, 1964. This multifaceted entity served as the nerve center for all facets of Mathis's professional life, overseeing his concert tours, theatrical performances, television appearances, and philanthropic endeavors. In doing so, Mathis strategically positioned himself to navigate the complexities of the entertainment industry while maintaining creative autonomy and integrity. At the helm of this new chapter stood Ray Hahn, Mathis's trusted manager and business partner. Together they formed a formidable team, with Hahn's astute guidance and unwavering support propelling Johnny to new heights of success. Hahn's untimely passing in September 1984 marked the end of an era, but his legacy endured as a testament to his instrumental role in shaping Mathis's illustrious career. Johnny Mathis's journey from legal battles to creative independence stands as a testament to his resilience, determination, and unwavering commitment to his craft. Through strategic business ventures and steadfast partnerships, Johnny reclaimed control over his career and solidified his status as a legendary figure in the annals of music history, his wealth value. With an impressive net worth estimated at a staggering $400 million, it stands as a testament to his unparalleled success in the music industry. Renowned for his velvety voice and timeless melodies, Johnny has sold an astounding 350 million albums worldwide, solidifying his status as one of the best-selling artists of all time. However, his financial acumen extends far beyond album sales, as he has made investments over the years, diversifying his portfolio into chains of restaurants, lucrative stocks and holdings, and even venturing into the fashion business with his signature line, Johnny Mathis Seduction. Not one to shy away from bold ventures, he also holds ownership of a football team, showcasing his entrepreneurial spirit and multifaceted talents. Despite his immense wealth and success, Johnny remains a humble and grounded figure, attributing much of his musical prowess to his greatest mentor, his father, Clem Mathis. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.